All right, let's run this and we'll take a look at an issue that we're gonna fix in the next few videos. So the issue that I want to fix is the name getting cut off right here. So you'll notice if we shrink this window, we get a scroll bar here, uh, but we don't get a scroll bar horizontally. So that's the issue that we're gonna fix. So to fix the full name getting cut off, we need to tell the tree how wide each tree view item is. We will need to calculate the tree node's ideal length and since that get num completed is part of the text being displayed, we'll need to use both. We will need to use that both here and in uh, in task queue item, um, referring to this part down here. Where is that? Uh, right here. This is where we set the label text to include that. So we're going to need to uh, include this here as well as um, uh, where is this thing? Task queue item somewhere over here. If there's a function, uh, let's see. There's a get item height, but there's also get item height, but there is also an I, a get item width function that we will use. So let's move over to the utility and uh, do some migrating. We're gonna put this down here. Uh, string get num completed, and it's gonna take a value tree like that. And our implementation will just be taken straight from here. Where is this guy? Get num completed. So we're just gonna grab this and we're gonna move it over. Put it down here at the bottom and get rid of the uh, class qualifier. And make it take a value tree named tree. Value tree, tree. That way we don't have to change the name here. All right, now that that's taken care of, we can get rid of it here. So uh, let's see, well, what was that function called? Um, let's see, get num completed. We can, Cancel this out and then cancel out the implementation over here somewhere. Where is this guy? Getting them completed. All right, we can get rid of this. And let's build and it's gonna throw some errors and we just need to make sure that we can get that working. Okay, so right here, this is where we want to pass a tree. And is there another one? Okay, that's the only one. Okay, cool, that takes care of that. Now, before we progress on to the tree row item text squeezing, let's delete our settings and existing tasks and see what happens. Let's go to Finder. Let's get rid of this. Goodbye settings. Let's get rid of these two tasks. And let's run it and see what happens. All right, juice assertion. Let's push play. Uh, what was being called here? Uh, let's see. Our settings file does not contain a valid value tree. Okay, let's look at that real quick. Okay, so this is zero bytes, so there's nothing in it. So it never gets filled with anything, and since there's no settings file to check for properties from, no tree is ever loaded. So the first thing that fails is having a tree to load. Okay, we already solved what to do if there's no current file property. Make a settings value tree, and then do those steps if the settings contains no current file property. So we'll do that right here. Let's kill this. And we'll do value tree settings, settings, and again, another instance where we should really uh, solidify all the identifiers that we're gonna be able to use for setting our properties and identifiers and stuff. Okay, let's do save tree to disk. Um, we're gonna save our settings tree and we're gonna save it over our settings file. And now we can call load tree. All right, let's try this again. Okay, load tree for disk, play. All right, so we hit this one here. So now we can, uh, let's see, let's just step over, step over, step over, step over. Okay, so that's cool. Um, our settings were valid. It didn't have this property, so now it's gonna create the default task. All right, so let's just keep pressing play again. And we'll press play again. And there we go. Okay, cool. All right, so we can get rid of a couple things from here. We can get rid of this reveal to user. And let's make sure that our uh, settings file is uh, looking okay. Let's open this, open with Visual Studio Code. Okay, this all looks great. Here's our current file and then our X, Y, and, and uh, width and height. That's fine. Okay, so all of this is good to go. Uh, I'm gonna leave these J asserts in this one right here because they would get stripped out in a release build But they are super helpful for us right now um, We'll get rid of this one though because this well. No, we'll leave this one just in case. Okay 
All right, let's move to our task queue item uh, dot header file. And let's implement the get item width function in our uh, in this class. So this function is going to be used to figure out how wide the row item should be in the tree view. And that's going to divide how wide the task queue item component will eventually be. So let's move up here and let's declare it first. Let's do int get item width const override like that. And let's make a stub for it. Um, where should we put that? Let's put that after our uh, create task queue item. So we'll go int task queue item get item width const like that. And while we're here, let's move our get item height. Why not? Let's put that right here. And just add this and get rid of that override and remove this implementation. Okay, great. All right, so we got our stub in place. Now our item width is going to be based on our string's length, so we're, we will want to use the same size font as what is being used in our label in our widget. So let's try using a label locally to compute this. So let's just add a label here, label, label. And we know that our label's height is uh, get item height minus two because of how uh, task queue item component resized works. This thing right here, we got uh, our bounds is this reduced and then our label is the same. Uh, it's the same height as our uh, bounds that have been reduced by two. So we'll do auto size equals get item height minus two and then label dot set size 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 and now we can just use our name string and use the labels font uh, get string width function to get the name of the uh, width of the string and return that so we can do string name equals tree name to string now we can do return label dot get font dot get string width name all right let's try that out Okay, that's a step in the right direction, but the names are cut off. And that's because it's not taking into account the, uh, the size of the get num completed string or the tick box. So this is pretty easy to solve. We can do if, um, if tree.getNum children is greater than zero, then we just need to build the string the same way we build it in, um, in a task queue item component. So we just do name and then add that tab and then add get num completed tree. Now if we look again at a task queue item component are resized over here, this guy right here, the tick box is a square of size get item height minus two because this is our, uh, our local bounds is gonna be get item height tall and then we're reducing that by two. And we have called that over here, that amount is referred to as size. So we can just add that here. Now let's try it now. Oh, forgot the parentheses. One more time. Okay, this is better. We can see part of it. It's still cutting it off. 